Hey everyone and welcome to another All About Arby's video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Cedar Creek 311 RL 5th wheel trailer. This is a rear living room couples coach. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you around the inside and the outside of the RV. Then we'll close it all up, show you what it looks like closed, kind of go over some of the changes and things that you're seeing. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we are now up inside this brand new Cedar Creek 311 RL. And as you've seen on the floor plan there that was up, it is a triple slide out rear living room couples coach. We're going to start down here in the living room kitchen area and kind of work our way around. So the slide out on the door side has your dinette table in it and your theater seat. You have nice big panoramic window view there. They're deep tent safety glass windows. They have the day-night roller shades downstairs here in this area. The freestanding table does have a leaf extension and also raises up with some hidden storage underneath. You also have the hidden storage in the chairs. And then there's two additional folding chairs that are currently stored underneath the bed up there, but you can bring them out in case you get guests. There is an electric outlet down there on the outer wall. Now the theater seat on the RV, this is the mink decor. So this is a new decor color for the mid-year model change. And that theater seat does have a USB charger port and it is power so you can open and close it by power. There's a couple cup holders in the middle along with a little bit of storage in the middle as well. There's an electric outlet down there in between the two sofas. Now the sofa across the back is a hide a bed sofa so this will actually fold out into a large bed and there's still room to walk around the island area here and kind of scoot by if needed. The sofa and the theater seat are completely freestanding so if you wanted to or needed to replace them in the future you can do so it's not like bolted into the RV. Um, so pretty easy to change out if you do hold on to the camper for that long. Up above you have some more overhead cabinets, quite a bit of space. And they actually made the center section protrude outward towards you a little bit. So it gives you about another probably six or eight inches of depth of space there. That was something they actually did in the Riverstone brand a while back ago, and it looks like they're bringing it down into the Cedar Creek line. Electric fireplace, which is pretty nice. Just basically a fancy electric space heater, but a 5100 BTU space heater. So it really helps kind of knock the chill off on a cool fall night without burning your propane out. There's some uh, space below the radio in between the fireplace and stuff there, which is actually fairly deep. You're probably looking at about, I'd say, 16, 18 inches deep, roughly. So you could store, you know, DVD player, Blu-ray player, you know, video game system, whatever you want to put in there, pretty reasonably. Overhead cabinets above the TV. You do have your ceiling fan up top. Nice little pendant lighting area there with some accent lighting around it as well. This thing has a huge countertop on the island section here. Really, really nice setup. Plenty of room to kind of help prep food, do dishes, all that type of stuff. But they brought that out really nice. There's an electric outlet on the end of the island there as well. The unit has the large four burner top insignia oven. This is currently the biggest oven you can get in an RV without going to a full residential style oven. Plenty of storage space beside the oven there. Pull out full extending ball burn drawers. You have more overhead space, really large microwave, 
and it is another insignia microwave as well too so you got a matching oven and microwave some overhead space as well and some more space on this side on around to this side of the island you can see a little easier in the picture pop up there but you do have four drawers and then you do also have some storage space below as well in the front fascia of the island here is the lighter gray color where the back side and sides are kind of a black color so kind of a two-tone island look to it high-rise pull-out sprayer faucet the little spring faucet and they went to these little graded holders here and you've got a larger sink on this side than that side but a dual sink area and they kind of changed up the countertop look a little bit as well for the most part all vinyl floor down here except for the slide over there which is a flush floor slide and they kind of make it to where it drops down into the sub floor so that carpet does kind of help hide those mechanisms to do that now some brands have done linoleum there the only problem with that in all truthfulness is, is a lot of times that linoleum cracks and breaks on those little edges and grooves where you step on it constantly getting in and out of the seating area and dinette area and then you end up having to replace it fairly soon so the carpet even though it's not as a uh, clean cleanliness friendly i guess um, is actually something that's going to last longer than the linoleum on the edging But overall, very, very beautiful section down here. Now, up this way, you do have the large residential refrigerator. So you have your refrigerator on top, freezer and ice maker stuff down on the bottom section there you see pop up. And you also have some overhead storage as well. Then on the left side over here, you do have a pretty large pantry area. Now the left side is deeper than the right side, but overall a pretty good amount of space. And down below here you have some more storage and a little pull-out drawer. A little bit of counter space, which would be kind of nice to put your coffee pot or toaster or something along those lines over here. There's an electric outlet on the side of that section there, along with a couple USB charger ports as well. And then you do have some more overhead cabinets. Now I got this stuff out here. You'll see when we get outside where we'll talk about this a little bit too, but this unit was ordered with a four camera security system. So you have the seven inch monitor and it has an observation camera on the back. And then you'll have two side cameras and a camera over your door. So you can use that in here when you're, you know, just kind of wanting to see around your camper at nighttime or you can use it while you're driving down the road and see what's going on behind you and around you. Now this feature right here is something that they've been doing for a little bit. This is the TST tire pressure monitoring system. So you have a little screen here that will read out your tire pressures inside the truck for you. Um, so you just stick that in your truck and there's actual, kind of like what's on your car, it has tire pressure monitors built into the, the wheels that will send a signal into that little monitor and basically kind of let you know what's going on. So if you're driving down the road at 70 miles an hour and you have a blowout, you're gonna know when that thing goes off. Um, you'd be really, really surprised how many people have flat tires or blowouts or whatever and they're traveling down the road and they don't even know it because it's so far back there and these things usually pull pretty well. Um, but that's kind of nice to be able to know that when you were traveling down the road. Now down below down there is the central vac and dustpan vac along with your electric box and your propane leak detector. The unit also has a turbo exhaust fan, fantastic vent fan, and this is the controls for it. Now that fan is actually located up here, so it's a really nice exhaust fan system there. 
Then you're going to see your stickers that talk about your Firefly uh, electronic system in the unit. So FireflyInt.com. You can go there, check out some information about this. But it is a really, really nice improvement, in my opinion, to this system over the old version. Uh, this system just reacts and the touch screen and stuff is so much faster than the old version. I had to sit there and double tap it sometimes and just wait on it. Um, so much quicker reacting system and just a little bit cooler setup. Um, you know, there is a like a master light switch here. And just with the hit of one button, I just shut down almost the entire coach. So, you know, just about everything went off right there. And then I just hit the button again, and boom, it's all right back on. So, really, really cool setup. Um, but this also has, you know, your tanks and stuff in here telling you what it's doing. Right here, we're telling our battery we're at 13.4 volts. We have the living room air conditioner information displayed here on the home screen. You can go in here, do individual lights if you want to. Go back to the HVAC system. This is a smaller coach, so it only has two airs. But you got your living room air and your bedroom air. And those airs have little sensors right here, so you can set them at different temperatures. So one here in the living room, one up in the bedroom. You can go back into your slides, see what your slides are doing here, your awning buttons all in there. So a lot of really cool setup stuff in here and then for the solar charge system here you can see here 12 volt 30 amp solar charge controller um, currently we're plugged into electric and we're in a garage so there's no light from the solar side of things but it's kind of doing what it's supposed to do here and you got your ceiling fan switch here as well now going on up into the bedroom area uh, or i'm sorry the bathroom area We'll pop up some pictures here too, but they changed this up as well, and you now have white cabinets in here. So this is gonna look a little bit different than what you've seen in last year's version as well. So you've got some storage down below, a little sink area there, and a medicine cabinet up top. There is also another exhaust fan, turbo exhaust fan up here. You've got the skylight up above, and you have air conditioning and heat vents both in here. Uh, one piece fiberglass shower with the sit down seat. A uh, triple sliding glass door there. And then you do have the porcelain foot flush toilet. And you also have some linen area back there as well. Now, bathroom wise, again, we're in a smaller coach, so it is a little snug, but it is pretty usable so nothing real crazy there sliding pocket door I like that feature there so you don't have to worry about coming out of the bedroom and swinging the door one way or another when you're half asleep at night now bedroom wise you do have a lot of space in here this is a pretty good size bedroom now this one has the carpet option in it but normally standard is all vinyl floor up here as well but this customer chose to do the carpet up here now you can also see here in the bedroom area, you do have the nicer whisper quiet air conditioning system. Um, so you got ducts running down through here, kind of a racetrack duct system kind of thing, dual track. But it's nice to have this whisper quiet when you're in here trying to sleep or watch TV or even down in the living room just talk and conversate. Uh, it is very nice to be able to hear each other without that loud roar above your head. Um, another thing too I keep kind of forgetting about here is these new light switches. Basically they're just little touch light switches and accent lighting here as well too. And this right here actually can come off the wall. So you could technically take it off this spot right here and mount it over there by your bed if you wanted to. Uh, or just take it off and put it on those uh, cool little nightstands they put up above the windows there also. So you could do that, move those around. They are not wired in. It's actually a wireless system. So you've got four full extending uh, drawers there. They are on ball bearing drawer guides as well. A little accent lighting down below. 
decent size emergency exit window there so you can look out over your campsite. Hopefully you never need it for the emergency part, but it does open as well. And you've got a little 32 inch flat screen TV there, just kind of overlooking the bed area. And this was also ordered with the Cadet electric wall heater that you're seeing over there on the side. And that's another basically electric space heater there, kind of like the fireplace downstairs, just not as pretty. And that does also allow you to heat up this section without burning through some propane. Um, the windows do open on both sides of the bed and there's also USB charger ports on both sides of the bed. And you have 110 electric outlets as well. Now, this area right here is pretty massive. This is a huge walk-in closet here. And this thing is really, really nice. Plenty of room in here. This closet bar goes all the way across. So you've got almost eight feet of hanging closet bar here. Lots of shelf space. There is part of the King uh, Wi-Fi router system to help bring Wi-Fi into the coach from the campground. If you go to a campground that has Wi-Fi. But a lot of shelf space here. You're also prepped for washer dryer as well. Now, if you want to do a washer dryer, this actually does not stack like the old school versions. That shelving section right there comes out and the washer dryer sits in that so, uh, little lower shelving section there and goes back in there side by side. So you still get all that upper space and your closet bar and all that type of stuff. You just basically lose that lower shelving section right here. But overall, very, very nice large bedroom for a fifth wheel this size. They definitely dedicated a decent amount of bedroom space here. They do have kind of a nice crown molding and stuff up there as well. But a complete new look as far as coloring of the cabinets, the furniture, countertops, the flooring. And you'll see even when we go outside here, an all new exterior look as well. We are going to head on back to the outside, guys. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of this new Cedar Creek 311 RL fifth wheel here. We're going to start here on the door side and kind of work our way around. So one of the first things you're going to notice is exterior graphics change. Mid-year model change. They changed up the exterior fiberglass colors, the lower metal color, all the graphics changed. So a complete new look on the outside for the Cedar Creek product. They went with, with uh, what I would say is a little bit more modern design, I guess. Um, so a lot of changes to the exterior look. Now on this side of the RV here, you have a traditional power awning. So you push a button, it goes in and out, has adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff. Does have the built-in LED light up there. The unit has frameless windows on the exterior sidewalls, deep tent safety glass windows, and you can also opt in for dual pane windows as an option if you want it. You have two exterior speakers kind of spread apart here, but one round one right there. And then on the other side of the storage door over there is another one. So you can uh, sit outside and kind of listen to the radio if you want. Now this one was also ordered with the optional four camera security system. So you have a side mounted camera, which actually looks down the side of the RV while you're driving down the road. There is another one up above the entry door, just above that uh, amber light up there. And then you got one on the back and then one directly on the other side. So you'll have four cameras kind of eyeballing around your camper. It's got a seven inch monitor, you'll see. And uh, basically that allows you to one, see around the RV when you're driving, but also it allows you to use that monitor while you're inside and kind of see around your RV as well if you hear noises in the middle of the night. Little pet friendly leash hook right there as well. Down below is a gas line hookup. Your propane tanks are right there behind that storage compartment there popping up. So you got two 30 pound propane tanks and then an outside gas hookup just below. You can also see the auto level jack system. So it is a six point 
automatic hydraulic leveling jack system on the unit. So you got two jacks on the front, two in the middle, and then two just behind the rear axle. So you hit a button, the thing auto levels all by itself. Now, obviously, if you're too out of whack and the ground's not, you know, somewhat level, um, your jacks could run out of length. They only come so long. So you might still have to put some blocks under it if you get in a situation where you're pretty uh, unlevel on a campsite. But most campsites are fairly decent. You have a large pass-through storage compartment here that goes across the whole side of the coach here. And that storage door is held up by magnetic holders. With quite a bit of storage space here. You have TV hookups, electric outlet back here, and also your central vacuum back here as well. You can see the aluminum tube framing up there. Another really nice feature here is the thicker baggage doors. You do have the slam lock baggage doors. These are a little bit nicer lock handles as well. They are metal instead of some of the cheaper plastic versions. Um, but the door itself is actually thicker, better insulated than what's found on a lot of lower priced RVs. Now over here you do have an electric outlet and also an exterior spray port there as well. Um, so if you do have to hose down some things on this side or if you have like a little grill or something set up here, you do have a water source there. Now the unit does have the more ride zero G style step. So it has a shock assist to it. And basically it's real simple, easy to flip up and down. You can see it pop up there in the picture. It just kind of holds itself up. Another cool little feature is it actually has the Cedar Creek name engraved into it and a little light behind it. So it kind of lights it up at night. It's kind of neat. Do you have a nice one piece fiberglass entry door here with a little peephole in it instead of a big window. Now the door is 32 inches wide, so it's a little bit wider door than some fifth wheel, so it's just a little easier to get in and out. Then you do have the large folding entry handle there to help you get in and out. And also, just so you guys know, if you're out looking at an RV dealer's lot, looking at campers, they usually put the model number right next to the entry door there. So this one will have the 311 RL logo right there. And that is where you will find your model number so you can let your salesperson know what you're looking at and like. Uh, this particular unit, again, was ordered with the slide-out awning covers. And that is basically an awning that rolls in and out with the slide toppers there. And that uh, just basically kind of keeps leaves, twigs, debris, uh, all that type of stuff off the top of the room. It helps shed away some water. Obviously, storm water could blow in sideways in the wind or something. But it does help repel a lot of things. And they do offer a second awning on some models which would be kind of like this first one that we were talking about, that would attach to the side of this slide out and then come out an additional, I think it's like eight or nine feet roughly. So you can get a secondary awning on some models if you want. Tires down below, you can see you do have a nice aluminum wheel. We'll get to the tire size when we get to the other side. But they also now have the tire pressure monitoring system built into the tire. It comes with that little monitor you've seen when we were inside there that you can put in your truck and keep an eye on your tires while you're driving down the road. That's one thing that happens occasionally. Somebody might have a low tire or a flat tire and not know it while they're driving down the highway and it could tear stuff up. So at least now with this pressure monitoring system, you will know if that happens. Unit also has the Dexter Easy Flex center point suspension system you see pop up there, which is kind of like shocks for an RV. And then it also has the Dexter Never Adjust Brakes, which again is basically kind of a self-adjusting brake system so you don't have to worry about it. Now on around to the back, you do have a whole new look back here as well. So you do have the traditional ladder going up and down. It does come down nice and low, so it's a little easier to get up and down on compared to some brands. There you can see up top in the center, the uh, little black piece up there with the little blue light. That is the observation or backup camera. Now another new feature that you're going to see here is going to be lights up here. So yeah, everybody's got a light down here, but 
now you have some up in the middle as well those act as turn signals and brake lights as well so you have if you're turning on your left turn you're going to have the lower and the middle light blinking and same thing with the right so just a little bit more safety precaution on the rear end of the vehicle now down below, you can see pop up there, it does have the two inch square hitch receiver on the back. Now that is just there really for like a luggage rack or a bike rack kind of scenario. It is not a pull hitch. If you wanted to pull like a boat or something like that behind you, you would have to beef that up or change that out for something like that. Um, see, we're getting a little dark here, I apologize. So it's gonna be a little hard to see. But uh, down below the spare tire underneath there, you can also see full enclosed underbelly. Dump hose holder is also underneath of there, that round tube. And just below as well, there is a low point uh, freshwater tank drain right back up there. And then you can also see the uh, ice maker on off valve and drain valve for winterization purposes. So that is located right down there underneath the back or behind the back axle as well. The stove exhaust out up there. So you got a little open door you got to flip open from time to time up there. Down below here is going to be your dump area. So just in front of the center jack and those dump handles are up here in your docking station so you have two grays and a black but they're up here so once you get there and you hook up your dump hose and stuff down there you don't have to crawl underneath the rv to pull handles all the time so you can just do that from right there in your docking station detachable power cord here 50 amp electric service 12 gallon gas electric water heater, now standard. You can opt in for the uh, Truma on demand water heater if you want. So it's kind of your choice now before it was the opposite way around. So they switched it back to this way. There is a powered power cord reel here as well. So you can stick your power cord in it and roll it up. Back to the docking station here. You have your battery disconnect up here, cable and satellite hookups here, front cap light button, winterization valves for bypassing of water heater. Your water hose is gonna hook up down here. Then if you wanna use city water or tank water, you flip it the direction of the line. So you can fill up your fresh water tank, use that, or just use city water, either one. You have your outside shower with hot and cold water. Then you do have your black tank flush in here as well, along with hydraulic on-off selector valves there too. I like the fact that this door actually is on a swing hinge here instead of an up and down hinge. So that way it does not interfere with the slide out up there. Some of them like to lift these type of doors on this side, and then it could get caught in between the slide when it's closing. So another nice little safety feature there to keep you from tearing something up. Now down below here as well, you do have some more low point water drains. Now another thing I like that Cedar Creek does, you can kind of see it here. They bring this lower wrap metal down to the frame. So it really kind of gives it a cleaner look where a lot of brands expose all that I-beam frame underneath of that section. And then over time it gets all cruddy, dirty, rusty looking kind of. And then, you know, you got to get down there and clean it and sand it and paint it and all that type of stuff. But they do a little bit nicer job, I think, on that portion. Now in this compartment here, you do have your hydraulic reservoir, which holds your fluid for your auto level jacks and your hydraulic slides. This is also where you would manually override it in case of an electronic failure. There's also an extra in and out button here as well for the slides. 
Down below is your battery area, and in this area you could fit, I'd say, three, maybe four batteries, but at least three for sure. Up here, some little instructions on how to do the auto level jack system. Now, one other thing I like that they did is they went back to this controller and uh, with the whole electronic change up that they did for mid-year model change, this controller is just a little more functional than the old version that they had. I can do pretty much everything I want from here and not have to go inside the RV. Uh, so I can sit here and scroll down through, kind of see my battery conditions, you know, my side levels, all that stuff can be done right here. If I want to retract my jacks, I can just do what I want right here. Auto level, individually control things, all from this one pad. Real simple to do from outside the RV. So definitely like that they went back to the older style control on that side of things sometimes new isn't always better um, the next thing going to pop up here is going to be some weight stickers that you're going to see so we're going to pop up the gross vehicle weight sticker which does have your production date on it has your axle weights and your again your gross weight which is the most you can load the rv up to and then the next one's going to be the UVW sticker, the unloaded vehicle weight sticker, which tells you how much the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. Next will be the carrying capacity sticker again, which is basically just telling you how much you're able to load in to the RV. And then last is your tire sticker, which talks about your tire size and basically tells you your tire pressure as well. Um, obviously on the front here, you can see the LED lights. So they changed up the front look of the RV as well. And supposedly there is some lettering and effects on the RV that does kind of glow a little bit at nighttime. Um, it's not quite dark enough out here with all these lights and stuff I do have on, but uh, supposedly parts of it glow. We'll see how that works out. And last but not least, you do have a Rhino pen box, which is the new end thing for Lippert's frame system. So it is a stronger pen box, but they do offer as an option an upgraded trail air pen box, or you can change out to a more ride pen box as well. Um, now, Cedar Creek only does trail air, but you can aftermarket go to more ride or some other brand if you wanted to. Down below here is a massive storage compartment area as well. And back in behind, there's a little panel that opens up right there. And you do have some wiring fuses and things like that back in there that you're seeing pop up too. All right, guys, we are going to head back to the inside and close this baby up. I'll show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now back up inside this beautiful Cedar Creek 311 RL fifth wheel. And we are going to close up these slides so you can kind of see how this all functions. Uh, again, you got to come back to your Firefly system here. Go to the slides, which we've already done. And you've got your extend and retract buttons. So what we're going to do here, it's uh, run these in. So we hit the retract button, and again, hydraulics, if you've watched my videos before, kind of goes the path of least resistance. So the bed slide usually moves in and out first. So that comes right on in and bumps up against the bed. Now, I left the bedroom door open on purpose because if I want to get in there with the slide closed, the bed will be in the way. So if you leave the door open while you're traveling, that will allow you access to come in here to rest area or whatever and go to bed. But if you close the door and then bring the room in, you will only be able to get slightly in there. It's a really, you, know, you gotta be kind of skinny to do it and I'm not that guy. So, um, you know, you are better off to prop that open in my opinion, so you can have access to your bedroom if you want. Now over here, obviously you can still get to the bathroom. 
so no big deal there now spinning back around here hopefully I'm not making you guys too dizzy here um, you basically just again hit the retract button our kitchen slides rolling in and then you can see the other slide here is going to come in as well So they are all the way in. So kind of gets you an idea when you first walk up into the coach if it's all closed up. You have plenty of room to kind of come on up in here. You can get to your refrigerator area here. So that's fully accessible. You could kind of come in here, stand sideways, use your sink if you needed to wash your hands or something like that. You obviously can't get to the back section of the RV with it closed unless you want to climb over the counter or you would have to climb over the table a little bit. There is room here to where you could kind of scoot around the island, but then your table's kind of blocking you. Um, so you could, you know, if this table were completely unscrewed from the floor, you could kind of maneuver that around a little bit, come up with some cool little quick disconnect kind of feature there and then get on around. but. And most of the time you're not going to really need to get back there but if you do you could have to you know kind of crawl over some stuff here now a really important thing to obviously make sure you do before you travel um, make sure you strap in the fridge uh, as far as the doors there is a little safety thing to lock these in and the freezer as well and then you also want to before you open it up make sure you look back in there and make sure that cabinet door didn't pop open by any crazy chance so it doesn't get ripped off when you go to run the room out. And also same thing back there. Um, you know, you do have a cabinet back there and those doors could possibly pop open. Um, I think from just kind of looking at it and eyeballing it, I think you're okay, but you know, just make sure you check that type of stuff. Make sure nothing did fall out of there and get in behind your slide brackets or anything. So just be safe, check them out. Again, guys, thanks for checking out the video. We're going to go ahead and run these back out here. Also, guys, be sure to check out CouchesRVNation.com, guys. They're one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country. They will save you guys a ton of money on a new RV.